so he- hello everyone uh, my name is navid i'm the process engineer for enterprise security in reddington gulf and uh, today we'll be talking about uh, palo alto prisma access uh, i've been working on palo alto network since last couple of years and in today's session we'll be looking into uh, its sasi technology which is prisma access uh, starting with an overview then uh, going for a deep dive and then finally the use cases where it can help the customers so as you know currently uh, you know uh, when it comes to business uh, you have seen currently more and more companies are using cloud and many applications are moving from data centers to the cloud due to current scenario uh, you know as well if you see covid 19 Uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, workforces working remotely from home initially it was i would say a couple of years ago 5% but now almost 100% is working from home right so you can see as well there are many statistics and reports showing uh, different values uh, you know which has been recognized uh, by various portals and Uh, it is estimated that by 2024 60% of the enterprises would have implemented sd1 for more optional for more optimal routes uh, to the internet and you know the applications uh, on internet to get better performance so to implement uh, you know uh, I, i would say to if you see the current a uh, scenario when it comes to security solutions uh, uh on cloud it is very complex right the existing approach uh, is today is is to secure mobile workforces and cloud applications in combination with data center on prem in the cloud it's very complex customers are adopting different point solutions like web proxy vpns mpls uh, backhauling etc to help get things going and provide access and security uh, but this is not only complex but users end up with a poor experience because with mpls backhauling latency is not ideal and no security only connectivity right so you can see the three three main challenges uh, complex setup uh, poor user experience and security gaps so here comes you know uh, sasi to help you out okay so sasi stands for secure access service edge okay so it is uh, you know it has been emerging since a uh, couple of years now uh, as a cyber security concept that even gartner has described in august 2019 report uh you know the future of networks or network security is in the cloud so with an ex- with the increase in remote users and software as a service the existing network approaches and technologies simply no longer provide the levels of security and access control that digitization or i would say that digital organization need does the need for a new approach for the network and security has risen so as you can see there are two components in uh, sasi security as a service and network as a service okay and both of them are converged uh, with wide area network and you know provide with various uh, solutions or you know or yeah why i'm saying uh, solutions rather than i would say it's service okay service based solutions because it's uh, totally on cloud to support cloud workload uh, along with uh, you know uh, even hybrid and on prem workloads so you can see there are various features supported uh, by so, you know i would say saas but here security as a service and nas so um, if you are aware of palo alto networks uh, you know you must be aware of the various features that it uh, already provides to the customers so these are the same uh, features uh, but in a, you know provided in a uh, i would say a better f- way for for supporting uh, global customers okay and providing with them providing them with um, 
access and security uh, wherever they are at a, at any time so the you know uh, features like ssl decryption of uh, firewall policies it, it becomes uh, you know fwas or firewall as a service then uh, you know, also the uh, threat prevention uh, becomes ztna zero trust network access uh, finally wildfire sandboxing dns security csb uh, you know cloud security web gateway dlp as you know it, they, they all become security as a service component and uh, network as a service uh, if you are aware uh, if you are following uh, the you know the latest updates uh, version 9.1 have been released and for hardware firewalls sd wan is already a feature of uh, with panos 9.1 so same has been incorporated in prisma access as well and again the uh, you know the traditional uh, features of qos policy based forwarding ipsec and ssl vpn so this becomes a network as a service component So here we go, um, you know, in a much more detail, or I would say, you know, highlighting each and every feature when it comes to deployment. So if you see here, um, you know, secure access service edge is, uh, I would say, developed and managed on cloud, and it is present globally across 100 plus countries, uh, I would say 100 plus locations in you know 70 plus countries. And it provides you uh, all the customers across the globe access, uh, you know, to the various um, data sources, or I would say, uh, various uh, resources uh, like SaaS, uh, public cloud, internet connectivity between headquarters, branch offices, and mobile. Right, and it helps organizations in several ways uh, with with the features like flexibility, um, cost saving, reduced complexity increased performance and you know as zero trust network access so why flexibility uh, because you can see a lot of uh, comprehensive uh, you know uh, features i would say a comprehensive feature set is available for the customers to choose from uh, including network and security access services uh, cost saving definitely you don't have to uh, you know have a uh, i would say you need to have a basic the basic setup to connect your uh, branch office or headquarter or your remote offices or your uh, remote users to the uh, SASE, uh, you know cloud or remote app, prisma access cloud instead of buying and managing multiple point products yeah so it will traditionally or it, it would dramatically uh, reduce cost and it resources uh the reduced complexity uh, yeah definitely you don't have to manage anything it's a service so nowadays you can see Due to COVID-19 situation, uh, you know many people are moving their, uh, uh, I would say, workload to cloud. That's why you can see a lot of usage uh, from AWS, uh, Google Cloud, Azure. So they definitely, you know, reduce the complexity because they manage everything for for the customers. And uh, clouds, uh, you know, cloud computing is at scale, so it definitely increases the performance and provides easy access to the resources located anywhere that is you know you know any any user uh, located anywhere can access the apps internet and even corporate data uh, on prem and cloud easily and with uh, with better performance and better security and uh, ztna like uh, you know i hope everyone knows the concept where you know you remove the trust uh, assumptions when users and devices or applications connect from anywhere across the globe and you you know uh, so it doesn't matter where you are connecting from uh, who is connecting what is connecting at what time it is connecting you still uh, make sure that you secure the complete session uh, regardless of uh, any other context yeah so moving on we will talk about the architecture so SASE architecture identifies, like we discussed, it identifies users and devices, uh, you know, and applications, and identif and applies policy-based security and delivers secure access to the appropriate application or data. So this approach allows organization to apply secure access no matter where the users are located. So uh, 
it's more or less the same uh, but the in the slide we are seeing architecture in uh, in detail i would say okay so you can see there are you know there are there are so many components connecting to the uh, uh, prisma access layer so you have security layer you have networking layer and you have uh, you know connecting to connectivity to public internet um, SaaS infrastructure, public cloud, uh, and uh, IPsec tunnel connectivity through to branch offices and mobile users, and you provide uh, you know the same uh, uh, you know the patented the patented technology SP3 for providing security to the user and uh, application traffic. So, uh, but to uh, you know talk about the connectivity. Here, uh, just imagine this Prisma Cloud uh, to be, or Prisma Access Cloud to be available over 100 locations uh, spread across 70 countries. So I would say covering almost every country uh, or every region rather than country, every region in the world. So uh, the connectivity is provided by the firewalls, next generation firewalls, but rather you know, uh, than uh, hardware firewalls, or virtual firewalls, uh, it is, uh, you know, firewall as a service. So firewalls, or I would say rather virtual firewalls, but you don't know, you know, it is similar to VMware or, you know, any kind of uh, firewall which is on-prem deployed on a ESXi, but it is, you know, uh, completely hosted, managed, and, you know, deployed by, by the cloud vendors as a service. So in case, in this case, Palo Alto, you know, is taking care of providing the uh, gateway firewalls, uh, which which connect the Prisma Access Cloud as a service for the customers. So you, so as a matter of fact, uh, you know, when you try, when you want to opt for the SASE service uh, or your Prisma Access, you don't have to spin up anything, or you don't have to even, uh, you know, do any configuration on your or I would say uh, just you need to establish connectivity between your uh, on-prem firewall and the uh, Prisma access. So sometimes it is uh, through Global Protect VPN, if it is, uh, you know, if it's a Palo Alto firewall on-prem, or if it is a third party, then it, uh, you know, firewall, it, then it needs to be IP sectoral. And on the Prisma access side, the, the firewalls are Palo Alto firewalls hosted as a service. So no spinning up of the firewalls is needed and is completely taken care by Palo Alto. And, you know, it is, uh, I would say, the management is done by Panorama. Yeah, so uh, I would rather, I would say, you know, the management orchestration of uh, security policies of uh, logging is taken care of by Panorama. Yeah. And, um, uh, if you are uh, aware of cloud te computing technologies, yeah, they provide with uh, very less latency and with uh, good, very good performance. So, you know, so the application it has been uh, visible or it has been tested, and they have seen that you know Office 360 application like Office 365, uh, G Suite, Salesforce, and the SLA is less than 30%, thirty percent, thirty you know MS latency. For accessing those applications through Prisma Access. Okay, so now, so here you can imagine that you know the Prisma Access has a presence across the globe, uh, and the perimeter gateways are Palo Alto firewalls, and uh, you know all of them are being centrally managed by uh, Panorama. Okay, again that is also uh, hosted as a service, and it is only accessible to uh, Palo Alto, uh, you know, development team or, you know, the management team. And when customers opt for that service, it is available to them as well. But what is uh, not visible to them is the, the uh, send or, or the, you know, backend data lake where all of the logs from the gateway firewalls is stored, uh, you know. So it is definitely taken care of by Panorama, but the data lake is, if you have, if you are aware, Cortex data lake okay so that's again a new technology which has been launched a couple of months ago which basically you know uh, integrates the network endpoint cloud security 
uh, in a single platform so so these firewalls they don't store store the uh, logs on their uh, hard disks rather they they basically use a logging service which it is cortex data lake which stores all the data at a central location okay yeah so just imagine you know uh, this is the uh, this is the, this is a feature set and i would say this is a deep uh, deep down connectivity uh, but uh, you know it is on a on a global scale connected by uh, multiple firewalls gateway firewalls and uh, centrally connected or centrally logged by a cortex data lake and managed by um, panorama okay so and the features are the same you know as you can uh, what you see in um, next generation firewall subscriptions like threat prevention uh, wildfire uh, uh, url filtering but apart from that you also get uh, you know threat intel like autofocus aperture dns security even uh, a global protect vpn with hip enabled um, what else um, almost every feature that is available uh, you know uh, for cloud based security it is it is uh, you know it is available but uh, apart from sd1 yeah so it has to be purchased separately so when you when now after the architecture when you talk about the overall connectivity of uh, you know remote offices or mobile users from uh, from the various locations to prisma access you can see that it is pretty simple yeah so Mobile users they connect from Global Threat VPN client, and uh, you know remote offices they connect to the Prisma access from their uh, through their firewalls. Okay, so here, like I said, it can be Palo Alto firewall or it can be a traditional uh, any third party firewall. Okay, so you in case of uh, Palo Alto, you need to establish Global Protect VPN. Uh, sorry, in in case yeah, in case of um, Palo Alto firewall, uh, if it is mobile user, yeah, so it has to be Global Protect VPN. If it is remote networks, then it has to be uh, IP sectoral, traditional IP sectoral between the remote office firewall and the Prisma access because on the Prisma access there is always uh, Palo Alto firewall, gateway firewall as a service. And then finally, you can also connect uh, headquarters or SaaS applications. You know, through uh, through Prisma Access as, as a as a central point or a central hub for, for connection uh, between remote users, SaaS applications, data centers, and mobile users. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So you know, Prisma Access is the is the is a product name I would say from Palo Alto. The technology is SASE. So if you are aware of uh, cloud computing or uh, you know, at least aware of the basic concepts of cloud, you must be knowing what kind of features uh, it provides or how it is, uh, why is it better than on-prem solutions. So you know, it is first, first of all, it is globally present. So you don't have to worry about uh, speed and performance uh, because you know, connecting to on-prem data center, which is remotely located uh, thousands of kilometers away, will will definitely ha add high latency and it will reduce the uh, speed of the connection from any remote office or any remote user access. But here it is present globally, so it is um, you know I would say the latency or speed is uh, way higher than on-prem connectivity. Um, yeah, so it is, I would say, less than 30 milliseconds of access uh, uh, connecting. And these uh, connect, this connectivity is provided by, you know, edge locations, I would say, from all across the globe. And uh, it, the whole cloud infrastructure is managed, I would say, whatever service they are providing, uh, you know, so firewall as a service, security as a service, SaaS connectivity, all of these managed services, they are basically, uh, you know, they are developed by containers and microservices and automated uh, in terms of deployment so uh, this is this is basically you know the beauty of cloud so you uh, you configure you manage things uh, uh, you know in a, in a programmatic way rather than manual 
you know uh, intervention so then there is uh, scaling out and back as needed so definitely this is the best feature uh, you don't get it in uh, on prem so as the workload increases uh, on prisma access in terms of uh, connectivity in terms of uh, access or in terms of uh, you know any kind of uh, security needed for the customers uh, the, uh, the 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 firewalls i would say they automatically are scaled up um, you know by the panorama uh, programmatically so it happens automatically and uh, the customers don't feel anything so it it handles the workload seamlessly without and giving a good customer experience and also when the workload goes down it automatically you know scales out so uh, that is one good thing and as it's a service it is multi tenant by nature or by design okay so you the customers get their own instances for management and for basically manage for managing their uh, uh, prisma access instance uh, and uh, you know in terms of uh, management and controls or you like like configuring policies threat prevention or when it comes to you know uh, managing the traffic or throughput of the of the uh, prisma access instance so it's like you basically get a set of a bundle you can purchase a bundle of uh, throughput or bundle of uh, bandwidth and for example if you are a customer with uh, three four locations and you need to go for prisma access you, you when you go for prisma access you need to just size it based upon the uh, the bandwidth okay so you you assume like you need 100 mb of uh, bandwidth for the divided across the three locations you can go for that that bandwidth bundle 100 mbps and when you when you purchase that you have the flexibility to manage the prisma access as you know as you need as a customer admin and you can also divide the bandwidth between the three locations and uh, apply all the security policies and features uh, related to access application of applications and uh, data resources from remote users and locations uh, so it's like you do, you you decide what amount of bandwidth you need to distribute among your uh, among your uh, uh, you know remote locations or or users and what kind of features you want to apply and uh, you know and the features by the way when you go for prisma access all of the features that you you purchase with subscriptions they are uh, you know better features i would say more features than in those same subscriptions are provided here so you you get dns security in, in, as a as a bundle in the bundles so you know you get threat prevention you get url filtering you get dns security you get firewall policies you get sandboxing uh, threat intel um and there are a couple of more things so which you don't get in on prem so uh, uh, sd wan is uh, not included but apart from that even global protect nowadays because of the current situation they are providing uh, you know um, free 90 days i believe uh, access to uh, Prisma access for free access for for the new customers who want to test it out, and apart from that, uh, the existing bundle also has Global Protect a feature with HIP, uh, you know, as a part of bundle. You don't have to purchase HIP separately. Yeah, so it is software based definitely. So you know, you don't have to worry about uh, you know what do you say uh, uh, if it is it will be compatible with uh, any specific hardware or not. So it is definitely hardware neutral, and SP3 architecture it uh, if you are aware of uh, Pal how palo alto works it is called single pass palo processing architecture wherein uh, any packet that comes into the firewall uh, gets checked by application uh, inspection i would say you know application uh, id it's a technology from palo alto so it's like application inspection content inspection and uh, user identification all of these three modules they work on the on each and every packet as it comes in and goes out uh, you know, together to provide the throughput that you have been seeing in the data sheets, which is, uh, you know, more, which is, which is actually accurate what you see in the data sheet under, uh, unlike the other vendors, you know, which have 10 or 15 uh, throughputs in the data sheets. Uh, yeah. So it can be, yeah, Prisma Access can be deployed in line for, uh, I would say, SaaS application access, and it will provide you with the Content inspection and you know uh, even SSL inspection when it when needed. 
Yeah, so we already talked about it. So SP3 in detail here, as you can see, when the traff and each and every, you know, when the packet comes in, uh, and like the traditional daisy chain uh, protections, uh, you know, uh, approach where you you where each and every packet is, uh, you know, it goes through these modules: user ID, app ID, content ID, or you know, rest of the other, uh, you know, custom features by, by the different vendors. Uh, they go sequentially, one by one, which adds to the latency and the and reduces to the throughput so here we have we call it sp3 where when a packet enters the uh, firewall it is processed by i would say multiple copies would be sent to different um, you know different modules app id for app for user uh, for app uh, uh, inspection application inspection content id for content inspection user id for identification and then all the you know uh, inline uh, uh, functions are done or, or completed like URL filtering, app decoding, etc., and you know the, the traffic is again encrypted and sent out in a secure manner. Yeah. So multi-tenancy. Yeah, it means basically like we discussed, every customer gets access to the their own instance to uh, Prisma access. Yeah. So here there is a. There is a uh, you know, there's a point that which should be noted. So the management plane is uh, is I would say is you know is man is integrated with multiple customers or shared by multiple customers. So the management plane remains the same, and multiple customers they they will have their own uh, management instance. But uh, when it comes to resources, it is shared by the different customers. But when it comes to data plane, as it is very critical, uh, you know, to achieve the performance in terms of throughput and you know speed, you you each customer they get dedicated data plane uh, tenant. Okay, so um, when I'm talking about multi-tenancy, it is about it's it it's uh, it is definitely you know private and secure uh, in terms of management or you know uh, look and feel. But it, um, in terms of resources, yeah, you get shared uh, when it comes to you know management plane. Because uh, yeah, it 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 is not like sh uh, when I'm saying shared, it is more of uh, you know optimum for for the customer's uh, requirement and load capacity. And uh, when it comes to data, it is they are making sure that uh, you know nothing is uh, you know affecting the uh, the data throughput or the data performance of of any customer. So if any customer is facing challenges with the with their data workloads or performance, it you know, they have, they, it should not affect the other customer. So, so that's the idea here. And even each customer, they get their own dedicated IP addresses. Yeah. Yeah, so this is what we were talking about. High speed, low latency um, uh, connectivity through Prisma Access, which is basically the, uh, you know, on the, on the back end, it is gateway firewalls, Palo Alto firewalls as a service. and managed centrally by panorama and you know logged uh, using logging service of cortex data lake so this is how it looks and you know more here i would say you know they are they are, they are present almost everywhere uh, 100 plus locations in 76 countries and they use uh, google high speed backbone okay so they provide you with the uh, very good stuff. Uh, if you are aware, Google is also leading now in cloud and you know in provide in, in terms of uh, connectivity, internet connectivity. So you get good speed, okay, uh, or I would say the best in class speed. So, um, and uh, when it comes to uh, how it achieves high speed, low latency connectivity, uh, it is because of the locations and the Prisma access, uh, you know. Um, Edge location, I would say, which is present uh, specific for a specific region. So, if a user is present in Europe or Belgium, uh, it will automatically connect to the Prisma access located in Belgium, okay, and access content in Europe. For example, if you try to access Google website from Belgium, you will never be blocked based upon the geolocation, and you will open the website in the in the Belgium location definitely. But uh, you know, but the thing is, he will uh, the cust the user in Belgium will not be able to access. Uh, you know, by default, it will connect to Prisma Access, and it will be, it will be accessing local content, and so it, he will not feel that if he, you know he is not able to access anything, uh, you know, uh, or getting blocked because of the location, uh, you know, uh, restriction. 
Uh, whereas if, if a customer from US travels to Belgium, and they have the flexibility to choose. Uh, you know, so here it's, it's only for US customers. Uh, and the other customers, for example, in Europe, they can they automatically get connected. They don't get a choice. But here, for US, uh, they when they travel to uh, any other country, or in this case, Belgium, they get the flexibility to choose you know, between which locations they want. So they can choose US, or they can select the current location. Okay, and they will get access as per their uh, selection. So yeah, and the other things are. Uh, you know, as you can see, they are SLA backed. There is SLA backed stability and performance. Yeah, so it's like uh, you get all the features and all the security uh, that uh, any cloud-based technology or cloud infrastructure supports. So these are the main th things. You know, um, Google uh, high-speed connectivity and you know, all other connections or other connectivity across the globe with high speed. So talking about the use cases. Yeah, so there are many use cases uh, to discuss. So one of them is mobile users. Yeah, so you can see here uh, from the diagram, the mobile users can connect to Prisma Access. Okay, uh, so it's like Prisma Access is the central hub for connecting the mobile users, the data centers, the branch of. Uh, not we'll not talk about the branch offices here because that is another use case. So your mobile users, uh, data center. Uh, and connecting centrally through two public cloud or SaaS applications and even secure access to internet. Yeah. So the key differentiators compared to the competitors is that they, you know, the competitors are almost like web proxies in the cloud. So they only have access or they allow access to web applications. But Prisma Access is a is actually an is a is a firewall as a service on NGFW technology on the cloud. So it gives you with uh, better performance, better uh, feature, better better security, I would say, and throughput, right? So, uh, and also it is always on. So Prisma Access is always on, and you are not, customer is not managing it. It is being managed by Palo Alto, and you don't have to worry about spinning up any instance. You just have to, uh, you know, uh, take the service or purchase the service and uh, connect to this, connect to Prisma Access, either using your, uh, you know, uh, on-prem firewall, which is non-Palo Alto, or, uh, you know, if you have Palo Alto firewall, then Global Protect VPN. Uh, if it is a non-Palo uh, Alto firewall, then IPsec VPN. And if, if you are remote users, then, you know, uh, directly to through Prisma Access using Global Protect, because that's what you will uh, get as a remote access VPN. And so there are different methods of connecting to the Prisma Cloud, depending upon the different requirement, or de depending upon, I would say, the current de different uh, setup that the customer or mobile user has. And then uh, they will get always on, you know, secure access to uh, to data center, to public cloud, to SaaS and internet, whenever they want, and wherever from wherever they want. And yeah, so uh, also you can imagine that it's it's uh, it is NGFW, uh, you know, uh, features that will again be applied like the SP3 architecture, um, then the threat prevention. Yeah, and even the global protect uh, hip features applied. So you can imagine what security you get from Palo Alto Networks on prem. You will get in a better way, or in a in a fast way from from Prism Access on cloud. Yeah. So you know the steps here is uh, uh, you know users can be anywhere. So even if they move, you know uh, you don't have to worry because uh, Prisma Access is available everywhere and it will automatically shift the you know the connectivity of the user as it moves. And based upon the workload, it will automatically scale out or scale in, okay, as workload increase, increases. So that's the, you know, benefit that you get when you move to cloud and, you know, SASE technology. Now, as you can see here, uh, it is again uh, an explanation of uh, the same uh, use case, but here you can see different uh, different uh, colors or different curves, and you can see the uh, you know the 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 report says that each uh, you know color uh, shows uh, each deploy node instance. So this is uh, showing you that uh, with, with the increased capacity, also you know the uh, handling by Prisma Access increases. Yeah. 
Uh, I would say, yeah, yeah, that's the same thing. Yes. So when it comes to remote networks, yeah, it's basically uh, similar to you know. It, so I would say you get the similar feature set, similar uh, experience as remote users. But here you definitely have uh, you know to select between two options. Either you connect using IPsec VPN tunnel, uh, based if you have you know non uh, Palo Alto firewall on in the remote office uh, or branch office and. If you have Palo Alto Firewall, you can connect through Global Protect VPN. So you get more or less the same feature set with same speed, with same experience, same performance. But here you cut down, you know, usually uh, the connectivity between branch and headquarters is through MPLS, right? So, you know, MPLS is, is I would say, is not a, uh, is not a, definitely it's a good solution but it is not uh, it does not work uh, as expected uh, you know or, or it should ideally work as it should ideally work i would say okay so it is only about connectivity and dedicated bandwidth uh, but still uh, you know if you have experienced mpls connectivity they are they are still not as fast as uh, uh, you know as uh, i would say cloud access okay so mpls is and mainly mpls is just all about connectivity and it is also expensive so to cut down on the costs and you know provide better performance and better security you can pro you know choose prisma access with the same comprehensive set as you can see in the use case for mobile users yeah yeah so here uh, you know the steps would be uh, like we have we have seen you know panorama is the central point of management or orchestration for for Prisma Access and the gateway firewalls are nothing but Palo Alto firewalls, but hosted as a service. So when you when you when any user or a customer opens a new office, and they can like I discussed, they can choose uh, you know the sizing or the uh, the uh, the licensing is based upon the bandwidth pool. Okay, so they can purchase a bandwidth pool of uh, you know how much ever throughput they want. Uh, based upon their you know experience, or they can also take us take our help to understand what what kind of bandwidth bundle will suit them, and if, depending upon different locations, they can divide that, okay, and then they can use uh, once they opt for uh, you know the Prism Access service, they get all the security features uh, as a comprehensive set, uh, you know, for for providing the security and you know uh, inspection for their uh, for their traffic, and then. It can be managed or it can be you know, uh, configured on Panorama. So even Panorama uh, uh, are available or is available by in two flavors. There is Panorama as a service or on cloud, which is which is actually suitable uh, if you have the complete workload on cloud. So you don't have any uh, you know uh, resources or data on the on prem. So you can completely manage your Gateway firewalls, your uh, you know user and data resources access from from Panorama on the cloud. But if you have, for example, some uh, some locations which have Palo Alto firewalls or uh, you know or at least one firewall on the remote location, and if you ha even have Panorama on premise, you can manage your remote ac uh, Prism access through through the Panorama, okay, on the prem. But the Panorama flavor on the cloud it doesn't provide you for the option to manage the firewalls on the prem so that feature is not yet available so when it comes to orchestration there are two options Panor prisma or, or sorry or panorama on cloud and panorama on prem and depending upon how your setup is if you are completely uh, you know a fully grown cloud customer or if you are you know hybrid customer with uh, with some uh, data and resources on cloud and some on prem uh, you know, at least you should have on-prem panorama and Palo Alto firewall on on the prem to for the for the uh, you know uh, for the on-prem panorama to manage your Prisma access setup. Otherwise, if you're completely cloud driven, then you have to use Prisma on cloud to manage your uh, you know the provision and manage your uh, setup. And as uh, again, you get you know the same auto scaling uh, in and out feature when it comes to workload as the remote users so going deep into the features yeah so there is uh, yeah like we discussed panorama access for uh, panorama of, or you know prisma access on cloud and on uh, on the uh, prem okay you can opt for any one 
Okay, just one minute. Yeah. Opt for any anyone depending upon your setup. Yeah. So you get uh, when you come when you come when you have on cloud is uh, access. You basically you know connect uh, all the uh, the perimeter or all the other locations uh, which have either uh, you know Palo Alto firewalls or any third party firewalls centrally to Prisma Access and it can be managed by Panorama. So you get all the features okay that you see uh, in 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 for of Panorama on the cloud. So SDVAN is a new feature I would say which is available a couple of months ago in uh, on the hardware firewalls. Uh, on PanOS 9.1, so Prisma Access can be used uh, as a as a hub for SD WAN. Okay, so instead of setting up your own SD WAN, uh, you know, Prisma Access can be used to connect the branch offices and headquarters across the globe to connect through you know Prisma Access SD WAN. So as you can see, there are benefits of of that. It provides you with high performance and you know a better management solution or uh, options. I would say. You know VPN. Yeah. So uh, you can so the the thing here is you can see that it is providing with the same features of uh, you know of on-prem NJFW firewall, but uh, with uh, with an option of or with, with with basically always on status. Okay, it will always be available for you, and you don't have to worry about management or you know uh, management and configuration of that, and it provides you with better speed and availability. So again, this is the same. So network as a service or you know VPN provides you with IPsec VPN option, SSL VPN, SD WAN, clientless VPN as well for a third party for I would say irrespective of the client. And clean pipe, it is actually a, a feature typically for ISPs, I would say. Okay. So ISPs can connect to PA uh, or Prisma Access using a native connection directly to Google Cloud because it's the back end. High speed network that is that uses that is used by Prisma Access. So for better performance. Okay. So it's like uh, instead of using IPsec VPN, they can use the ISPs can send the through uh, then can send send their traffic through clean pipe to Prisma Access and they can get you know secure uh, connectivity or secure internet access for their customers. So when it comes to zero trust. Yeah, so zero trust is uh, basically the use of uh, you know application ID, uh, user ID, even content ID and uh, and HIP profile or of the global protect. So yeah, so if, if you have seen before, we talked about zero trust. It's 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 like you don't assume uh, you know uh, uh, trust assumptions or you don't uh, do trust assumptions on the on the user or application or data. You basically Inspect all the traffic from you know no matter from where it is coming, uh, you know and what what time it is coming and located from anywhere. Uh, QoS is similar to the QoS on the next generation firewall. So you basically you get user based and application based QoS uh, you know um, tagging. So you you define what are the critical applications, what applications need high speed, what are not non-critical applications, and even based upon user, you can define policies to reserve bandwidth for those applications and users. DNS security. Yeah, so DNS security is uh, you know is a is is a subscription which is actually uh, which has to be purchased when it, when you go for on-prem NGFW firewall or VM firewall. But unlike the hardware and VM series firewall, DNS security is included in the PA subscription, Prisma Access bundle. So it helps you block bad domains. And as you can see, uh, you know, it helps it, it, with the help of machine learning. Uh, you know, it can also block, um, I would say, domain generation algorithms, uh, which basically, uh, you know, uh, helps DNS tunneling. Okay, so it's like, uh, you know, DN through DNS, because the DNS uh, requests or DNS protocol is allowed, by you know as it's a as it's a well known protocol and it's used by you know uh, it's it's basically allowed i would say by any customer from inside to outside so you know uh, attackers they can use dns tunneling to uh, get access to the data i would say or exfiltrate data through dns tunneling so with, through dns security they can uh, you know you can block bad domains and you can um, block, block dns tunneling and data exfiltration uh, and you can predict using machine learning 
the DNS uh, generation or domain generation algorithms and block them. Yeah, firewall as a service. Yeah, I would say uh, that's the core. So you get gateway firewalls, uh, the same next generation firewalls as as a service, always on, and they can be uh, they are orchestrated by always on uh, uh, panorama and logged by you know logging service cloud uh, Cortex Data Lake. Uh, threat prevention features, you know, that you have seen on the next generation firewalls, like, uh, you know, single pass for parallel processing architecture, um, security policies, and even security profiles all applied on each and every packet. When it comes, you know, when, when the packet comes in and go to provide you with better throughput, or I would say, you know, what throughput has been men mentioned to you or promised to you. So yeah, DLP is something you know which is which is still uh, I would say in the I would say it is had it has been developed but it is still uh, being enhanced uh, as we as we see in, in the future it is there there are still works work going on on them okay so Prism Access has defined they have already predefined uh, you know DLP profiles for ease of detecting various data patterns and these are based on these data patterns are based on uh, you know, or the, I would say that these profiles are based on machine learning data patterns, various data patterns that have been, uh, you know, recognized by Palo Alto, worked upon by Palo Alto, document properties to reduce the false positives. So, so you know, it's actually this DLP or data pattern uh, feature started with Prisma SAS, if you're aware of that. Prisma SAS is again, uh, Prisma is a, is a part of Prisma. Uh, you know, uh, solutions, okay, or SaaS, not SaaS. Here, here, here we'll call, we'll say, uh, securing the cloud solution, okay. So Prisma, to just additional information here, Prisma has uh, three offerings. It is uh, Prisma Cloud, Prisma SaaS, and Prisma SaaS. Okay, so Prisma Cloud is for securing uh, uh, your cloud, okay. Then uh, so Prisma SaaS is to secure your uh, software as a SaaS application, so software as a service applications, and Prisma SaaS is Secure Access Service Edge, which is for securing, you know, you're providing you with uh, security as a service, I would say. Or, oh, yeah, that's what we have been discussing. So, it started with SAS, Prisma SAS, and it, now it has been also, in, you know, incorporated in Prisma Access. Yeah. So, using CASB is a well-known feature, okay, when it comes to cloud-based or SAS security, okay, SAS application security. Again, it had also started with the uh, Cloud, uh, yeah, sorry, Prisma SaaS. Okay, so Prisma SaaS, uh, as you can see on the in the API, uh, Prisma SaaS would be hosted. Uh, our it will be, it will be set up in inline mode to basically uh, inspect all the SaaS applications. Okay, and uh, to scan the contents of the SaaS applications, uh, you know, for threats like malicious files and even send files to Wildfire Sandbox. So that is the level of inspection that Prisma SaaS can do. So similar feature has been incorporated in, incorporated in uh, Prisma SASE. Using the CASB, you can allow or block SAS applications. You can restrict the, uh, you know, the, the granular functions. I would say of SAS applications. So you know, here here again, even Prisma Access uh, works like Prisma SAS in inline mode, and it can even provide you with granular control, like uploading a file. So for example, if you if you want, you can you know. Uh, we can inspect the SaaS application like Office 65, and even you, you can upload any file from which, has, which is being inter, you know inter, or detected to to Office 365 or, or to any other drive that you want. Okay, you can even redirect the access to personal cloud drive like Dropbox to corporate or enterprise Dropbox solution. So you can take security controls by inspecting the traffic uh, of SaaS applications and even majorly or at, a, at mainly allowing or blocking or if you're not al you're not blocking them you can tolerate or restrict them or provide the granular control as you need okay so that was it thank you so here to summarize we covered uh, you know what uh, is sassy technology i would say uh, uh, you know, on a on a on a higher level, and then uh, what Prisma Access does, uh, or what is Prisma Access offering from Palo Alto? What are the different use cases, feature set, and benefits? Okay, so uh, you know, SASE is a, is a well-known uh, cloud-based technology. 
Prisma Access is an uh, you know is a product from Palo Alto, and it provides you with uh, I would say uh, always on secure access to internet data, uh, uh, SaaS applications, and data resources on prem or on cloud for any user or any device or any application anywhere at any time. To keep it simple, yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. Perfect. Thank I think that will be all, Navid. Thank you so much for the session. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. So.